they came here when they were about 16, uh, maybe for the last seven, eight years. And I think they went through various trauma in trying to settle in at that age, uh, being away from their homeland and their family, I'm sure also had its own impact. When we first arrived in Nairobi, that was the first time we were really alone and no, no phone numbers, no contacts. And in a sense, on an experimental level, they will show if you live in a, an athletic culture, an athletic environment, even though you're not genetically belonging to that culture or that environment, what impact can it have on your life? They were young at the time and, you know, we would never sort of imagine sort of them guys coming out here for such a long time and trying to live an African life. Um, I don't know how they manage it. The people here, out here doesn't see them as a Mzungu. I think they see them as a Kenyan Mzungu kind of thing. <laughs> this is uh, Shaheen's compound, where we first moved in to uh, in 2007. No one lives here anymore. It's, uh, it's sort of run down by now. It's open. <laughs> we had a small mattress like coming out this way. One, one mattress between us and that was life. You know, we, we would eat on the mattress, we would sit on the mattress, we would sleep on the mattress. That was what we had. We didn't really have any money at that time, so we were just eating bread and jam for about a month. Yeah, we were in a bad state. I've never heard of anybody moving to Kenya at such an early age, and especially the developmental years. It's one of those things that, yeah, a lot of people have thought about, but nobody has the balls to do it. And these guys went and did it. And so you want to see if it's going to work, right? Because if you knew it was going to work, more people would do it but it's because it's a big risk, that's why it's neat. We were boiling the water from the water hole and at the same time we got malaria and it all hit at once. You were sweating, you were shivering, you were too hot or too cold and you had massive headaches. You didn't feel any appetite and I just didn't care if I went running because I didn't move from my bed for almost three days. And we I'd started to check on each other. Yeah, I would like, <laughs> every couple of hours, hey, hey Zane, you there? You, were, you still all right? Like, I'd roll over and poke him, and just to see if he was like still alive, like he'd make a noise, I'd be like, okay, he's cool. But I remember we didn't talk for like almost two days. He's not answering me, I'd punch you him know? in the back. I was just, just you know, get some, <laughs> get some type of noise out of him and you know they're all right. This is like part of the fun. I knew that the Kenyans are doing this and this is like camping. This is a camp. Shaheen's my next door neighbor. World record holder, you know? This is what I was looking for. We wake up every morning when it's still dark at six and we come out of our room all changed in our training clothing and we go with the group we training with one of the best there ever has been and you know out there the roads are amazing and you don't feel the hardships because at that time I guess the roads is what we were looking for. My goals as an athlete I always wanted to win a gold medal. I'm just chilling out. Yeah, welcome to my mess. Oh shit, I'm wearing New Balance. I'm gonna take that off too. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a jacket. I just got a jacket, I'm gonna wear that. Especially New Balance, they yeah. said I'm not marketable. But yeah, basically, this is my race cap. I used it last week in the cross country. As you can see, it's got no brands on it. I cut the brands off. I, I want to run with this singlet until I get sponsored. No, rep no free representation here. Yeah, word up. Just take a bucket shower here, cold water, no luxuries here. I'm gonna dye my hair too. <laughs> Hardcore, man. Mo's victory in the Olympics was 
seeing Mo win was like special to me because I knew him from 2006 when he was just still coming up. And he was like seeing us, you know, and a good athlete, but still a nobody to the big boys. Like, and uh, just shows how someone can have a breakthrough and all of a sudden be the champion, like smashing everybody all the time. And, uh, to win in the Olympics is the biggest victory, so it's amazing. That's how we do in Africa. Stop putting your makeup on. This is how we do, man. Off to the, off to the race. I mean, Matatus always have these little stickers, and they have a great meaning behind it. Like right here, it says, "It's no secret, I love Jesus." And then here it says, "If you have nothing to do, don't do it here." I mean, this is Africa. Like Mo Farah says, "Go hard or go home." That's what we do, man. We go hard every day. Eric, Eric, what would anybody say? Today they've set out the cross country course, a 2km lap. This is the E10 KU District Championships, so I think the top six in every race will go and represent the district at the Nationals, which are the Kenyan Trials for the World Cross. My brother's running in the senior men, 12k. Hey, this is Zane. Zane! Elvis! Elvis! Yeah. Elvis Presley. Yeah, Elvis Presley. <laughs> He's not dead, man. Relax, Jake. Relax. Even a little bit more is good. Just relax, man. You're still off in it. Hey, still you've got laps to go, Jake. I'm a little bit worried now because I'm starting to see some sign of fatigue. His head keeps rocking, like it drops and looks at the ground a lot. He dropped out, man, just now. I really lost my rhythm like over there in the hill. I was, I was a little bit worried about my legs, but I just utterly fatigued. It's something that these guys have by being born here that we will never have. We'll never be able to catch up to them here in this country. Like the benefits they receive by being born here, it's completely natural to them. I finish a race, or if I half even, if I half finish it, and I, I feel satisfied with it, I'll, I'll rest, take the evening off. If I'm not satisfied, then you'll probably find me out doing something, or in the house doing sit-ups, just to be at peace again. Right? In some ways. We uh, felt like we had to suffer because all the top athletes have come through this hard life and they've suffered to make it and uh, we feel like, you know, we need to feel the same. But in that same transition we got trapped there and then we stopped enjoying it. So in a way we're going through exactly what they went through and trying to find our way out. The king is sick. You're supposed to train to your fall down. But today I feel like falling down, so it's a good day.
It was Kenya time, eh? We're leaving, it's still an early start, we're leaving E10 around 6.30am. We're me meant to leave around 6.20, but, you know, this is Africa time. Today, because of patience at its max, I mean, you're seeing athletes being picked up already by Matatu's on the way to Ilderet. I mean, there's going to be more than 800 people running this. It's going to be sick. My name's Elvis. Yeah. Uh, registration. Elvis. Elvis. E L V I S. I've never done a road race in Kenya. I feel pretty strong. Like I wish I was able to finish. New Zealand told me they didn't want me to finish because of my races in April, like 15 and 5. But I guess maybe they're right. I've never run a half before on the road, and the effect it will have on my legs is like uh, unknown. So they go down there. Yeah. The I want to be in the front line. You should so. be in the front line, yeah. Okay. Okay. That one. Start. Go tire. Ah, yeah. twenty one. Yeah. There is somewhere where there's a. I did two laps, right? Yeah. Good, good. I made it two laps, right? Registration in a Delia Kaibu. How's my shoes? We ran 13.32, 5k. My shoes are fast, eh? Yeah. Your shoes are fast, no? It's not you, man. It's the shoes. It's the shoes, right? bullshit. It's oh. Lucy. You dad? What's up, man? What's up, man? Hey. Hello. Hey, your daughter is nice, man. Nice yeah, skin color. She's grown, man. Yeah. Maybe my kids will look like that one day. <laughs> Where's Does she remember? 1332 at 5k, man. What? 1332. Oh, yeah. how, how is that? <laughs> at altitude, eh? That's crazy, man. <laughs> You'll get here soon. Soon enough. I did two laps, but I'm losing my voice because yeah, the old man's getting laps there. We, we were running the wind, man. It was like too hard. 1332 <laughs> 5k. I'm using a spikes, man. Spikes? Yeah. You're using spikes? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get changed, eh? Because I think they're getting ready to go. What's up, Reed? How are we going? What time do you think you'll start? Five minutes? Ten minutes? Yeah, man. Which do you Five minutes. Strides, eh? Sounds good. Just turn yourself off and yep. get a ride in the middle of the group. Shut down for 20 minutes. Yeah, but the clean lady does your job, eh? Those? It's 2,000 times 7, 14K. The guy is two minutes. Two I'm not okay, man. I mean, all this stress all week. No. 
after the race, I'm looking for someone to blame right now. My calf is just, it, it felt bad, man. And now it just feels it go like, bang, a little bit. Great group, great session. Last one's 5.42. So everyone was coming down by a second or maintaining for 5.55, 5.52. First one was six flat, but after that, 5.55. Jake, what was the last one? 5.42. 5.42? Yeah. So you realize you just had like a 27.30 type workout, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, the workout Jake just did right there, that, that's, that spells out 27.30. Yeah, I've run out of 28, and I've never been able to do stuff like that. That was, that was phenomenal. I'd say the culture shock happens like when I'm on the plane, you know, for a second I miss home, just for a second. You know, you miss the things of home and then, you know, once I touch down in America, you know, I always love it here. The cars are awesome, the roads are good, and, you know, the food is amazing, so culture shock here doesn't really happen compared to what I've seen in the past you know culture shock I'd say would be going from New Zealand to Africa that was a culture shock I guess I'll watch MTV and listen to Tupac just you know hardcore music real loud drink a monster energy drink leave the hotel, rock up and just be like balls out, you know, like always, like, you know, pump yourself up and get to that start line feeling great, you know, just enjoy the moment because, you know, you've done all the hard work. The hard part's over. This is the easy part. So you've, you've been living in, Ethi uh, in, in Ethiopia? Or no, e I've been in Kenya. In Kenya, got it. How long have, uh, how long have you been there? The last six years. Wow. Well, you have all the time in the world over there to think about things and prepare yourself mentally for every situation. So you gain you gain a lot of confidence in being where you're at, you know. You you're in the place with the best some of the best runners in the world and you know it you're doing is the same as them, so I just say confidence and belief, like you believe you can do anything. Canova said that you never hear an African say, I can't do that. They just go and they try. As long as they can, they try it. You know, I think that's a part, like partly to do with lack of education, but in the end, it's a good thing. Like, because even if, even if you are so delusional, at least you believe you can do it. I thought I was having the best massage of my life in Japan before I raced. And now I think I'm having the best one just before <laughs> I race here. First race of the season is, you know, it opens you up for opportunities to bigger meets, sponsorships, 
this uh, if I run a New Zealand record on Sunday night, uh, it can like change my life. I'm ready to uh, live life a little bit easier. You know, <laughs> sponsorship deals would help that aspect of my life. I guess as soon as um, the sponsors come, it'll make life easier, which means have less stress and uh, I can move a lot easier within the country and uh, it makes training a lot easier. So, you know, when training's easier, I can go where I want. You don't have to live every day wondering, will I be broke next week? I'd say I'm at the breaking point where I'm really close to making it. I feel like this is uh, the year I need to make that breakthrough and I really need to punch the clock, you know? I guess I've been dreaming about this race since last year, since I ran my PB here, and uh, returning to this amazing track and uh, ripping it up. Perfect moment during the race would be to feel nothing come down to sea level and be running somewhere around 3k mark and to be feeling amazing knowing that you got all that energy left and that you can win this you can do this you know, no matter what someone does you can chase all the moves that's it Let's see who it is Talanga fading a little bit Estrada Robertson my plan was just to go with the pacemaker and after go one way you know and now, considering how deep the field is and seeing some really top guys there, I think I won't need to do that. I think I can just sit in there and just uh, see what happens, see who makes the move, cover it, and uh, see how I'm feeling. And it's going to be, I don't know, Ben Drew. Ben Drew's going to hold on for the win, and there's Dio Rosada for third. And they're going to get the A standard, 13-14. One second off the world championship. That's life. That's always life for me. No luck here. I am very disappointed with that one. But you know, I'm gonna take it like a man. You know, I'm not gonna bitch about it too much. But just like Canova said, you know, move on. Af Thanks. The Africans move on quickly. From losses or defeat, why shouldn't we? You know, we're, we're all people in the end. Under 28.30 there, 9,000. I'm here to run the 10,000 metres. I want a, a standard out of it, New Zealand record. I'd like to clock both of them in one night. Roger, Mark. Roger, Also, in this field, we're in the 11. We have the Suki I suppose you get that same feeling in the race. When uh, you know you're breaking your competitors and you know you're running faster than them. And they're just gone, you leave them behind. It's like hitting a downhill. It feels effortless. I suppose adrenaline's got you or something. There goes Robertson in the lead. Robertson is there. This is desperation time. Three. 
championship game state. That's how you do it, man. And everyone's like, oh, he's in last place. Oh, first yeah, couple I days. was crap in my undies, man. I was praying this is the day. And uh, since we made the special prayers, I should have been front line. Everything just went right. Well, the fact that these guys have followed such an unorthodox path and, uh, and made it, it's, it's intriguing. You know, it's, it sure makes you wonder if we, uh, you know, rounded up 20 of our best runners and sent them to Kenya with, uh, on a one-way ticket, which is clearly not going to happen. But if we did, what would happen? I want the people of E10 to say, you know, we saw, we saw those guys and where they came from, and they've worked hard, and now they've got what they were looking for. We're not running away from something, but we're running like to something, and we don't want to look back, you know, and we felt like we needed to achieve something before we went back. Going back to New Zealand felt like we were giving up. I said I'd rather die here right now than uh, go home. That was a scary thought, but I was serious. Yeah.